The so-called back button other focus method is a very popular approach amongst many wildlife and sport photographers, but I tried it a couple of times and I just didn't like it so much. In my, in my personal feeling, I had more disadvantages than I benefited from this function of the camera. And in this video, I want to explain you a bit first, what is the back button autofocus and why should you even use it? And then I want to show you why I'm not using it and what kind of alternative I have found for myself to kind of have the same functionality, maybe better. I would be interested what you think about this. And then I want to give you two more additional autofocus tips that work on basically every DSLR or mirrorless camera. So straight out of the box, the camera is configured in a way that the shutter button also activates the autofocus. Meaning if I see a bird, I take my camera and I half press the shutter button, it's acquiring the focus. If I have it on the one shot or AFS, um, this would just mean that it's acquiring the focus once, afterwards I can move and do whatever and the focus stays locked. If I have it on continuous autofocus, so AFC or AI servo, it means that the, the camera is constantly updating the autofocus if the animal moves or if I move my camera. And this is also usually how we want to have it. But there are some occasions that we want to like interfere with the autofocus and stop it. One example is if you can see that the camera is just not managing to get the focus. It's hunting and hunting or it doesn't have the, the camera has no confirmation of the focus, even though we think it's in focus. So here it would be nice to just stop the autofocus, but that's not possible with this setup. And the second point is true for DSLRs, where you only have the autofocus points a bit in the middle of the frame and never in the corners. And depending on how the composition of the image should be, we might want to have our subject a bit more in the corner. And then there is also the only workaround basically to take another autofocus point, put uh, like acquire the focus and then you need to switch to AFS and then go back to the middle, recompose and take the shot. And well, this obviously only works if the animal is not moving too fast. But if this is the situation, then this change from AFC to AFS just takes too long. And this is where the back button autofocus comes in place. So basically with the shutter, you do just that. You maybe start the exposure metering and you take pictures. And with the AF on button, with that is already on the camera, labeled, but it might need to be activated, you basically start the focus. So an example I just gave you where we have our subject a bit more in the corner, you would basically go with the center AF on the animal, hit the AF or press the AF on button until the focus is acquired, then let go. You can now recompose and take the picture. Again, only works if the animal is not moving, but it's a really quick change. And the same if we feel like the focus is hunting or like gives no confirmation of a lock, even though we see through the viewfinder that the image is sharp, you can just let go of the AF on button and take the picture. This sounds pretty convenient, so why am I not using it? First of all, especially now with the mirrorless cameras, I don't find myself often in situations where I actually need to stop the autofocus. But even with DSLRs, where it was more often the case, I always found this workflow a bit annoying because I like to move my autofocus point around a lot with the joystick. And if all the time that I want to take uh, to focus, I need to press this button, this means my, my thumb is away from the joystick. Now I need to move the joystick, change it and go back to focus. And I just prefer my traditional setup where I have the autofocus on the shutter button and then I can move the autofocus point around with the joystick basically at the same time. And I realized that this is a shortcoming of, the, of many cameras like the R5, R6, all Sony's and uh, Nikon's that I know. When I use the R3 a bit, I really like back button autofocusing more because there you had this smart controller that was like a combination of the AF on button and well, it's not really a joystick, it's a, uh, like a touch pad, but it's a combination of a button to acquire focus and to move the autofocus point around. So there it was somehow better for me. 
But what should you do if you encounter one of these situations where you need to stop the autofocus? Well, with my DSLRs, I was doing just that. I was reprogramming the AF on button to an AF off button. So basically, I, my camera is focusing as long as I press the shutter. And as soon as I press the AF on button here, the camera is stopping to focus. And then I'm basically in AFS or one shot for Canon. So it's kind of a reverse back button autofocus, if this makes sense. So as you can see, I clearly like the concept of having separated buttons for the autofocus and the shutter. But if in like 99.9% .9 of the cases I want to use them in combination, I for me it's just more convenient to have them coupled and can decouple them with the press of one button. But here I would really strongly encourage you to just give back button autofocusing a try and try it for more than a couple of hours, try it for a week or something. And if it's not nothing for you, then maybe you could think about the method that I showed you now. So at the beginning of the video, I promised you two more autofocus tips. And one of them has to do with the button configuration of the camera. And that's basically, you have a lot of buttons here. So make use of them, not necessarily only as an AF off or AF on if you stick with the back button autofocus. But I have uh, one of them designated to switch from the spot AF to tracking, the animal eye tracking that takes place over the whole frame. And this is for me just a super quick switch if I want to yeah, switch between the spot AF, which is more precise, but you need to move the autofocus point around with your joystick or another button. And again, on the other side, the tracking over the whole field, which is super great for fast moving action, but sometimes a bit less reliable. And the second thing is something I do in all my beginners classes that I teach. And that is basically set the joystick in a way that you can always move your autofocus point directly with it. Because the way it's set with most cameras, you first need to go to uh, press one button, this on the top right here for Canon, for Nikon and Sony, it might be another one. And then you can move the autofocus around with a joystick. I find this always a bit annoying and I prefer to have my camera set up in a way that I can without pressing any other buttons first, directly move the autofocus field with the joystick. This is just much quicker. And now if you think, but how, what if you move it on accident? Well, the good thing is it moves back very quickly in the center with just pressing the joystick once in the middle. And second, it actually gets deactivated after a while. I think the standard for cameras, Canon cameras might be 12 seconds, but you can even change this in the menu. But it's also only the same time as you have like the exposure uh, the exposure metering and all this thing on and after a few seconds it will turn off and then you cannot change it again but as soon as you half press the shutter button or any other button on the camera you can start moving the autofocus um, points directly with the joystick. I'm quite curious what do you think about the back button autofocus? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Or did you not try it yet? Let me know in the comments and I really hope you found this video helpful.